This is Hoosier Ag Today. I'm Andy Eubank, joined by Bill Mullen, Director of Agronomic Services at Seed Consultants Incorporated. On June 23rd, Bill and I met in Jay County, Indiana. Fields there and north of there have been hit hard this spring and early summer. Very wet fields. Let's find out how the corn and soybean plants are doing. Yeah, good morning, Andy. It's nice to be with you again. Uh, today, we're over here in the eastern part of Jay County, east of Portland. Uh, customer's place here, a uh, dairyman. Uh, and as you can see, that we have some issues out here with some water. Um, you know, it's affecting the corn, it's affecting the soybeans, all right? Um, you know, the big thing too is infecting the corn is what, how are these roots, or how are these plants really adapting to the, the issue that we have out here and that, all right? There's, there's people out here that put a lot of nitrogen on within, since that first part of June is side dress, all right? I talked to a customer yesterday, you know, he put on 60 gallon, 28, 180 pounds of nitrogen, all right? And when he was done on June the 6th, over on 600 acres, he's had 12 inches of rain, all right? And not nitrogen, we've lost a good portion of that, all right? Um, I was talking with a couple people yesterday and they felt with those conditions, the water and saturation and everything, there might be 50 pounds that could be still around to help the plant. The problem is it's going to be lower than where we would like to see it, where we put it in that. So we know we have that as an issue in that. On some of the smaller corn, do that pre-side side dress nitrate test. And it's basically going to tell us how much nitrogen is available still for that crop based on that yield goal. So it gives us some an idea rather than shooting from the hip. The ground's a little hard, but considering what the water we've had and no doubt As you can see here it's pretty well pancake roots all right even so we're still in the area and it's growing we have some healthy roots but we can see how it's layered here and these roots basically have have got some compaction here this plant is trying to grow through Oh boy, it's hard. Broke a little bit out. You can still see we have the compaction issue here, all right? Our roots still are healthy, but the big thing is our roots are pretty much staying on top in that right now. This ground is hard. Somehow we got to get these plants to, for these roots to try to grow through this and that. So, you know, it's green, and I think one big reason why it's still healthy with these roots on top, all that water we had kept this plant growing in that. So we know we got some issues here as far as trying to get these roots to grow once again the way they're supposed to in that. Now, come over here. I'm going to dig up a plant to where I think I have a little bit more water. Shorted, stunted plant. It's hard. Side by side with the next row as you can see we don't have as good roots developed here as we did with the other plant here still we have the compaction don't see any sidewall but this is more or less just from the ground pounding rains we've had and the way the conditions are it really affected these roots and the plant hasn't been growing as well These are things there that the customers and farmers, they need to go out into their fields and look and even dig up some plants, try to put a plan together what we're gonna do. So as you can see here, a lot worse. You know, we don't have as good root development in that. Packed right in here in that. Our nodal roots have developed, they're not going down. It's the nodal roots where we pick up the nutrients and the water to help feed that plant through the growing season in that. So, but all our roots pretty much are staying on top. As where I went with the other plant, in the row next to it, where we didn't have as water, it's a little bit higher, 
Where the shorter plant, where you had a little bit lower than that, yes, we still have compaction, but our root development is a little bit deeper than that. So, you know, this one here is, is, not, is going to continue to grow as normal as can be under these conditions. Plants like this are going to struggle. I would encourage people to go in and think about this. We've got to somehow break this ground and get air down the roots and that, and let that air and roots start to really try to grow out through this and that, and develop normally in that. The taller corn we can't do, but if there's a means where a grower, farmer can go ahead, and if the corn isn't quite as tall, it's just trying to take like an anhydrous ammonia toolbar if one's available, no nitrogen, but just that toolbar to go down in there and rip up or just knife into the ground. And when we're doing that, we're getting air down the root system. So it's going to help. The other thing we've got to keep in mind is whatever nitrogen's there, we've got to be concerned about that nitrosomonas bacteria as far as getting that healthy as well and utilizing that nitrogen that's in the ground and that. So, you know, um, that's, that's one thing just to think about is a means to get air to the root system, break open this ground. The taller corn, that's an issue because if we go with the toolbar, we're just going to break it off, the corn off. And then. As we get down to where we're talking about replacing some of this nitrogen we lost, uh, you know, a corn plant needs to have 80% of the nitrogen into the plant by tossing time in that. We know we've lost some of this and that. So whatever we come up with, try to replace some of that nitrogen, then we're going to have to consider what source of nitrogen we can get. I talked to a guy yesterday that's talking about flying on urea with some ammonium sulfate in that. The thing to keep in mind is with urea, we get any of that in the world, that plant, and after a rain that follows, um, it's going to dissolve. We'll get some burn on that plant on the inside of the world. Another stress, the plant really doesn't need in that. All right, Ammonium sulfate, we're not going to have the issue. But the other thing to keep in mind with urea, folks, is you put it on this time of the year, we, it could volatilize from the high temperature and high humidity. You need to th keep that in mind in that, all right? Be nice to do it right before rain. There's some people I know that are looking at, either by airplane or by ground application, of some of the taller corn of using these foliar products uh, that are non-burning nitrogen products like Coron, which is a controlled release nitrogen. I'm not out here, you know, saying, I'm supporting the Coron name itself. I'm just saying there's products like that to consider in that because it was non-burning, we're going right into the plant. You know, Andy, uh, right now, when I look out here, we still seem to have the issues with water like we did in the cornfield. Uh, as you can see, so in our lower spots here, the beans are more yellow. They're stunted. We can tell where there is some tile or some areas here in this field where the plants are a lot taller, a lot greener than that, all right? We've got probably a little bit better root system. We're gonna dig up some plants here just to see, but right now, just looking at these small yellow plants, all right, the roots aren't able to go ahead and start producing the nodules on the root system to produce its own nitrogen it needs in that, okay? Well, that's the big thing right now is, is trying to get some heat, trying to get some of these roots to start producing nodules in that, and we're gonna see some uh, nice uh, green, healthy plants in that. All these beans are planted in 30 inch rows here in this eastern part of Jay County. It works well for this customer in that, so that's what he's always stayed with. And the nice thing about 30 inch rows is we're getting air movement down through here and it really does help. So right now, I'm just gonna dig up some plants. Ground's a lot looser here compared to the corn. See how she broke up a lot easier than that, all right? Now, and yeah, it was a little compaction, but nothing like what the corn is. As you can see, it's, it's breaking up really nice, all right? You don't see the compacted layers like there. Again, these are healthier plants, you know, we don't have the water issue. When you look at these plants here, you know, look at the, the, the root tap, how she's gone down deep, that's good. Our lateral roots going off of there. But look at all the nodules so that are here on the roots and that. That's what we want to see. This is where the nitrogen is that plant really needs to go ahead and uh, pull the nitrogen for the growth. So, you know, these plants here really haven't been hurt. Again, a little bit looser soil. It's a lot taller. As you can see with the water, compared to before, a lot wetter, okay? A little bit more compact. 
reception. Yeah, she's breaking up loose enough, but you know, more damp. Yes, the plants are shorter compared to the other one. But one thing is though, is you could see here, you know, the, the tap or so, the main, you know, or, or tap root here, she's going down, okay. We're getting some good lateral movement. In it. We're also having here some nodules they are being produced on the roots in that, okay? You know, and that tells me these roots are healthy, the plant's trying to grow out of it. And then you look at the height of that plant and how much better, how much healthier it is in that, all right? Whereas on these plants here, yeah, they're still healthy, but they're just trying, they've been hurt by that water issue we had from all these rains and that, okay? The beans will grow out of it. When it does dry out, take that hula hoop or take your measuring uh, tape and go out here and do your stand count. See how many viable plants we have out there in that, all right? Um, you know, university for the last several years has shown at harvest time, if we have 95,000, 100,000 plants at harvest time, healthy plants at harvest time in that, we still have that potential for 50 bushel. I've got 18 here, all right? With 18 plants here, uh, my roughly, just out of, at this spot here, is, um, the result was 140,000, okay? So we saw over there with the healthier plants, a lot more plants, water wasn't an issue. Had 171, we have 140 here. And if the farmer was here, I'd tell him, don't touch it, all right? You know, we know these plants are growing, but one thing I do want to keep in mind is, is that on those healthier plants where we didn't have the water issue, it's the same variety, all right? That they were growing, I didn't see any flowers. Right now, there's flowers coming on these short plants that are approximately six inches, eight inches tall, all right? Right now, the sun's coming out, you know, um, hopefully we get some of these smaller plants to look like with this plant here is because this is what we like to see in that, all right? Do your stand counts, you know, come up with the plan, what you need to do as far as taking the weeds out as soon as you can. You know, some people are even talking about using foliar fertilizers. Well, that's fine. But the thing I say, just like the corn is, we know what our prices are gonna be at harvest time. We already have, you know, an investment in this crop. How much more can we put into it if we're not going to get a return back? And I think that's something we need to keep in mind. Thanks to Bill Mullen, Director of Agronomic Services at Seed Consultants Incorporated. I'm Andy Eubank. This is Who's Your Ag Today, Indiana's Farm Network.